come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, a movie review podcast that's recorded every Saturday night mm. in a dank, dark basement. Released this is live. A, released every about? Saturday. Yeah. yeah. It's it's released totally. every Saturday. <laughs> it magically appears on iTunes or, or sorry, no, no, no. There's no more iTunes. Oh shit! Apple right. Podcasts yeah. or wherever Gone. podcasts are found. Uh, please. Give us a star rating. Give us a like. Hit that thumbs up button or give us a review because all of that helps us reach more people like you. And I mean, that's what we're all in the game for, right? Bring you all together like a family. Yeah. Uh, Who are the internet radio superstars who meet in this basement every week? Michaela. John. And I'm Colin. And we're taking this show (laughs) on the road, aren't we? Yeah. We are. You yeah. can see us and hear us at the same you, time. I'm sorry. Do you, do you want to meet us? <laughs> what? <laughs> you can. For Why one not? night what? only. <laughs> we're going to be. Because we're probably going to fuck it up and never be as yeah, It's that's true. That's, uh, it's we're, true. Yeah. We're going to be at. Uh, we're going to. We're going to be in Madison. Yep. At the Madison, AMC Wisconsin. six. AMC six. The old Sundance Midvale. And this is going to be on July the 3rd. July 3rd, yeah. Where we are going to be uh, showing you uh, Steven Spielberg's classic movie, Jaws. Yes. And we're going to we're gonna try and wing our way through, uh, you know, entertaining you. Yeah, we're going to have a little Q&A. There's going to be some trivia. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a fun time. We're so going to celebrate the birth of America, you. right? <laughs> yeah. Right? <laughs> With the movie Jaws. Yes. Which yes. Is, of course, yeah. Which I mean, is, it's the 4th of July movie. How much more American can you get, really? <laughs> well, it is the first summer blockbuster ever, right? I mean, it so it, what gets more American yeah. than a summer blockbuster movie? Do we that's really have right. to celebrate her birthday? I mean, it's like a 30-year-old going like, I, it's birthday week. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, calm it's down, It's the America. day before, Sean. 200 and something <laughs> years old. We're We don't celebrate <laughs> birthdays anymore. <laughs> Well, we hope that uh, if you're listening to this and you're in the Madison, Wisconsin area, that you'll come out and say hi. Uh, Please do. do. Yeah. And watch Jaws on the big screen because you don't get to see that often. And that's fun. This is true. You'll forget how much. It's an event. Yes. You'll forget how much you love that movie. That'd be fun. And there's a bar there. Yeah. There's there's a bar in the theater. There's also drinking. Come do some shots with us. drinking. Do a shot with us. Mm -hmm. That'd be fun. I mean, maybe, you know, whatever. If you're so inclined. We have to leave Igor at home, unfortunately. Yeah, unfortunately, he will not be coming with us. Yeah, so you're not going to be Igor. No, we have to get a sitter. All right. If you want to sit for Igor, let us know. He's technically chained down here. Igor's our mailman. We'll be wheeling him out. Well, you heard him at the beginning of the show. We'll be wheeling him out for our mailbag segment. We'll We're we wheeling be, him out? We'll wheel, we, yeah. Like Cannibal He needs to break this week. Yeah. 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 <laughs> out of the, He's had a rough week. It's probably for the best that we That's wheel him true. out this week. That's yeah. true. Uh, but what we do here is we talk about uh, crazy movies that no one's ever heard of before. Uh, and tonight's movie was chosen by... Sean, what did we watch tonight? <laughs> uh, we watched the movie Circle of Iron. Circle of Iron. From Forgot the- what year it was. 1978. 78. Yeah. Directed Circle by Iron. Richard Moore. Who we would know from. Uh, uh, he didn't do a lot. <laughs> I looked at his IMDb before now, we went on air and there was literally one other movie. He shot Annie. What? He was a like cinematographer. He also shot a movie called like, He shot hey, Annie. Was he I'm mad alive. at her? Hey, I'm alive. Hey, I'm alive. Hey. That's the, it's hey, comma, I'm alive. <laughs> I I'm shot that, that. Movie. <laughs> What year was that? I, before or after this? I think before. Well, we were kind of surprised. Okay, so uh, if if I may. I'm uh, gonna, go I'm gonna, for it. I'm going to read to you. This is because uh, Sean actually dug this movie up on Blu-ray disc. I had never heard of this movie before, Mm-mm, which never. is something. Which I'm glad. That's something. Yeah, that That's I hadn't something. heard of it um, because, I mean, it's in my wheelhouse, right? But uh so here we go. This is an adventure epic written by Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee. The, the Bruce Lee. Of Bruce Lee. Not some, yeah, not some dude who happened just to be named Bruce Lee. Yeah. yeah the I, Bruce I mean, Lee. I would argue it might be some dude. Maybe. Because <laughs> based on what I saw in this movie, I. <laughs> Maybe. You know. you know what, though? I believe this is Bruce Lee. <laughs> well, they say this is his dream project he never lived to see. That's kind of sad. Well, All right, so here we go. This is the synopsis. The best, yeah, I was yeah. gonna say, you know, maybe that was merciful. <laughs> well, yeah, because where where would his career have gone? Okay, so at the height of his international fame, the legendary Bruce Lee, along with his friend and student James Coburn, had no idea. 
and Oscar winning screenwriter Sterling Siliphant. He wrote uh, uh, In the Heat of the Night. He also wrote like The Towering Inferno and The Poseidon Adventure and all okay. those things. But he also wrote Over the Top. Oh, oh my God. Oh, shit. <laughs> uh, well, anyway, uh, they began to write what Lee believed would be the greatest achievement of his film career. Five years after his mysterious death, Lee's vision would finally be realized. David Carradine, Christopher Lee, Roddy McDowell, and Eli Wallach star in this acclaimed cult hit that brings Lee's personal philosophy to the screen with a still potent combination of mysticism, humor, and martial arts mayhem. Wow. Mayhem. That's overstating a lot of <laughs> that. Is. Mayhem. Mayhem. This is also known in some territories as the silent flute. Mm. Okay. It, it's not. Oh, well. Never mind. I'm, no, I'm just, you know what? I don't care. <laughs> I'm just going to lead off with bewilderment. Is a good place to start yes. with this movie, starting with the title, Circle of Iron. This is, of course, some type of play on like a crucible of iron or some, some kind of... I don't of, know what this his, means. His medallion. It was a circle of iron. Oh, so it's a literal... Yeah the, yeah, the fucking peacock medallion. Yeah. Okay. okay. I didn't okay. get that till just now. All right. <laughs> did not understand till just now. That's, that's what it is. Yeah. All right. Circle of iron. That's what okay, allows but him did, to go Does to... anyone call it that in the, mo in the movie? No. They couldn't be bothered to make that connect. Do connect they, the do they reference it at all? No, not really. I'm like, do they ever talk about it? No, I don't think they do. No, this is for us to understand because this movie a lot starts, of this is for us to understand. Well, it starts <laughs> off with a screen you. that uh, that prefaces the movie and explains to us that um, that you know that this was conceived by uh, the great Bruce Lee, and it may be controversial because mm. it has some of his deeply held personal beliefs in it. And uh, that they, they're just so great that they, you know, glad that they were able to put this movie together. After his thoughts his on Eastern culture and whatnot. Is that what it is? That's his thoughts on Eastern culture or just his philosophy of life? Because that's what I'm getting out of this. I think, well, it's, a, it's like a combination of both. He wanted to, he wanted to bring like the, the ideas of Eastern civilization and put them on screen. His, so his were beliefs these, and all that. Were these actual ideologies or did he make this shit up? Oh, that's as far as I got. Okay. Yes. So I'm guessing yeah. a lot of this is like yes. his. It's like his interpretation of Eastern philosophy. So when you ask, is so this real like, or made up? Yes. So it's like one well. in the hand, two in the cow udder, sure, right? Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Wait. What? Huh? Yeah. There was one that in the hand, weird two in the burning fake bush. proverb at the beginning that was like, a horse doesn't have udders, and a cow a can't, can't winnie, and. Up is yeah. uh, up sideways. Is up is down and left is sideways. Or some something. sideways or some yeah. shit. It, it was very that's like that's it. That's it's, the end of it. It's well, very that's, like that's Willy Wonka. Yeah. yeah. Is this basically well, that's Cord making this... fun of the philosophies of the blind man? <laughs> yeah. Who are these are two characters in the movie. One is the blind man played by uh, David Carradine, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. who at this time. So David Carradine, I guess, was a student of uh, maybe one of uh, Bruce Lee's most famous students. What? Right? Was he a student? He, I, he yeah, ended I think up, so, wasn't he? Yeah. Well, because a friend at least. So he was. So Bruce Lee, like, famously brought uh, karate over to America, right? And this revolutionized uh, American fighting styles in the movies. Um, because, and I think that's probably watching this tonight. I'm sitting there going, like, this is probably one of like the big karate movies. Like everybody before this was used to Hollywood stuntman style fighting. Right. Mm -hmm. So that would have been exciting and weird when they saw this movie going like, Ooh, look at the way that they fight. Imagine you have to imagine this is a sword and the sorcery movie kind of mm. without the sword or the sorcery. Uh, but it kind of takes place in a mystical fantasy land of uh, barren landscapes and mountains and whatever. Uh, but, and you have your kind of uh, Conan, the barbarian kind of hero uh, who, and everybody just goes around spouting, Eastern philosophy and, yes. and fighting with karate style and different fighting styles. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So hopefully we're giving you a mental picture. That's, that's the base. Yeah. <laughs> oh, where to go with this movie. I get the impression that a lot of Eastern philosophy is just kind of like, uh, whatever you do, don't answer a question. You answer it with a riddle, you know, mm -hmm. you got to make like some stuff up because then it sounds profound. Is it profound? Uh, no. No. One beer makes a man a philosopher, but two beers makes a man a fool. 
I just made genius. that up. Is that pretty you're good? I was, like, I was like, that's actually not bad. <laughs> yeah. it, okay. it works. It's I have actually, a beer in my hand, so I but figure, I think, we're going to see what happens then. That's what you're going to do. Just keep it on that simple level where you're like, <laughs> yep. all right, I get it. Are you Are you going to just spout these throughout the entire It's going to be like the Chuck Norris jokes. Please say it. Okay. Whatever. <laughs> well, I need to that. be inspired again. I had a beer in my hand. I don't know what the. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you're just like that's that's college philosophy. Go ahead in my hand. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. Is that profound? Because uh, because I'm trying to figure On out some like, level. Sure. When a movie sets up like this is some you know this is controversial, but we got it through. We honored Bruce Lee, and we got so I'm like, okay, so here, we're gonna get some controversial shit. He's got some something in here, mm-hmm. but the only thing that I could find out that was controversial was like a studio executive going how short those shorts were. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so it short. was the seventies, you know, <laughs> such hairy well, what, man thighs. What are we talking about? Uh, we're talking about cord. I Jeff cord. Cooper. I, I oh, almost called God. him your. We're talking about cord. Who's Jeff he Cooper? He wishes he were the guy who he played the actor thespian. Yeah, ah! the thespian. Ah! Who you being generous. His Colin. hair acted better in this movie than he did. Um, <laughs> show him, show him. You had a really good descriptor for what he physically looked like. What did you say about him? I think I called him um, Michael Ironside's ugly younger brother. <laughs> yes, that's kind of what he looks like. He's just yeah. got. He's got a weird face, and it is bothersome. Oh, I just don't it, like it. it, it oh. Because <laughs> it doesn't... He's either laughing like an idiot. It bends in all the wrong places. It does. Yeah. It's like his angles are off on his yeah. face, and you're just like... It's like, it's that, like Picasso that paint and come to life. And it never... It changes ever so slightly throughout the movie, but not really. He's really small, weird eyes, too. Yeah. Like, on top of a really weirdly bent face. Yeah. His chin. He had that Gaston chin. It's like yeah. he's got too many lines... Because like he's got everywhere. the ass chin too. Yeah. yeah, he's got the ass chin. He's like too many lines yeah. from being sunbaked. It's like baked. somebody's constantly pushing his face to the center of the mask. <laughs> he's, yeah. like, he's like an art student that hasn't quite grasped portraits yet. Yeah, you know. Yeah, right. Yeah, but like your does, eyes still. Too I mean, like, together. like no, everything's still too angular. But we're talking about like he is still. I mean, I guess the uh, the, the 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 prototypical kind of barbarian hero. Oh, for sure. This is yes. years yeah, before sure. Conan the Barbarian, yes. by the yes. way. So I suppose this is coming out of the like uh, the sword and sandal movies genre, yeah. right? The Hercules movies, the Italian, Spanish, yes. whatever the hell. Yeah, like the one we previously yeah. did on this show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Lou, with Lou <laughs> yes. Ferrigno. Yeah, but this would be like Steve Reeves or whatever the fuck the, the earlier ones because they hadn't evolved into Conan the Barbarian yet. Somebody no. hadn't invented Dungeons and Dragons so they hadn't actually said like that's a better fantasy world to put these uh, characters in, but he has kind of uh, it's a physique that I can only describe as like a surfer guy meets like Venice Beach um, muscle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like nineties yeah. Venice Beach, like those dudes. He had a, he should have been wearing a fanny pack. Yeah, y- yeah, because he's got the hair. This is like it's like when they, a fanny pack and roller rock, skates. Right. Yeah. Hair. When they started walking on the beach, I'm like, he's gonna go catch some waves right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. There you go. Like so a, this yeah. was a, like yeah, if, and his name's Jeff. He's like Jeff. If, yeah. Jeff from the beach. If, yeah. But you no, know, his name's Cord. That's a surfer <laughs> That's fucking a dude. Fucking surfer He's got like a hemp <laughs> necklace and shit. Hey, like yeah. if he had ever actually, if he had ever actually been wearing a shirt, it would have been made of mesh. Absolutely. Yeah, would have been one of those like neon like tight yes, mesh ones. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. The air shorts conditioned shirt, and a backwards pink hat. Yes. Yeah. He's like Community. Anybody watch Community? Yeah. yeah. He's like Vaughn from oh. Community. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he is Vaughn. Yeah. Eric That's Christian it. Olsen. Yes. yes. Yeah, Let me ask you. Yes. Okay, so in the pantheon of uh, these type of uh, movie heroes, who? Pulled it off better. Reb Brown as your or Reb Jeff Brown. Cooper? Reb Brown, your no, hands down. You're yours. telling me that Reb Brown, oh, well, I mean, that I agree with you. That guy's a goddamn you. American hero compared to this guy. Yeah. But they're both similar. It's like basically we talk, took the most American dude that we possibly could and dropped him in the middle of a medieval fantasy land. But yeah. like he had some sort of charisma. Yeah, like I, I would give my woman to him. Yeah, over this I get guy. It. Like, because yeah. everyone in that movie is just like, "Fuck my wife, yeah. go do it, yeah. please, <laughs> please take her, so. yeah. take her I, now." I forgot about that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. you got to listen That's back to our episode. I was great Gore, about that. Everyone's just future. like, "God damn it, I, fuck me." Yeah. I, I, uh, yeah. Yeah. But I would not. I'd be like, your head is own theme song. I mean, oh, dude, God. On. no one's going to sing about Jeff. <laughs> Jeff. Cord. 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 I mean, they would sing about Jeff. Rope. Wire. I don't know what else you got. Wow, you're Stringy. really at a stream of consciousness thing yeah, tonight, aren't you? You're just like, whatever comes to mind. <laughs> um, so, Cord is a... Uh, 
has the mentality of a five year old. He yeah. really does. He's, Hi, uh, he's I'm cord. Yeah, yeah, he says that. Hey, too. he does. Yeah, I'm cord. The Forrest Gump wave. Yeah, <laughs> that's his first, his opening thing. He, he's he's a childlike wonderment on his face at all times. It really well, we is. meet him fighting in a tournament that's presided over by Roddy McDowell. Yes, wearing a ridiculous. <laughs> God hat. bless him. I mean, all the guys in this uh, a tournament, the thing that always cracks me up about these type of movies is, you know, because they take place in some faraway time, which doesn't exist. But whatever. It's supposed to be ancient. Mm. But everybody looks like they came out of, like, the 1980s mm-hmm. uh, Muscle Beach. Yeah. Right? Um, Cord has Farrah Fawcett hair. Yeah. Well, he does. Well, it's that glam rock hair or whatever. Led Zeppelin hair or whatever mm-hmm. that yeah. he had going on there. That's all feathered. Oh, it's, um, it's and terrible. so he loses a match because there's a you know we open with a uh exhibition ma- you know a tournament a karate thing right? yeah and he loses because he hits a guy after uh the guy's on the ground and roddy mcdowell was like no you cannot do this he doesn't sound like that because he sounds like roddy mcdowell no, it pretty much sounds like that yeah the other guy montag <laughs> mangord <laughs> Ma- whatever his name Don't say is. Gord ever again. <laughs> <laughs> it was something like that. Uh, so the 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 plot engine of this movie, right? We're setting this up for the folks at home. God, mm-hmm. I wish his name was Mangord now. It wasn't his name. What, great, what the fuck a, was his name? That's a great character name. Yeah, the Man guy Gord. who uh, yeah. Mangord. Um, <laughs> so Cord <laughs> wants to find a book, right? Yeah. Cord wants just any book, Colin. A spe- the book of all knowledge of good and evil, ah, apparently, there we go. yes. right? That is held by a guy. We don't know. I assume an evil wizard, but we don't know. Just some guy who's the antagonist of the film, mm-hmm. supposedly called Satan. I mean, what's his name? Zoltar? Z- Zaytan. 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 Not Satan in any way. Yeah. Satan. Shaytan. Isn't that like the Iranian? Whatever. They do have an uh, okay. So Z-tan. it's too it's too bad. Like he didn't be like, wow, that's awfully close to Satan, and then it reveals like he is Satan. Well, <laughs> is a it, different movie would have done that. This movie is a parable, though, right? I many, guess it feels like many parables. It, yeah, many parables. Many yeah. half started, not always finished parables. It's a philosophy movie. It's not actually about what you're watching. And all everything means. It's all symbols. All mm-hmm. I got Although, questions. That's the case I have questions. And for the next four hours, we're going to break them all down. <laughs> yeah, because uh, whether or not we could figure this out, I mean, it's uh, obtuse, uh, opaque, opaque, oblique, mm-hmm. uh, okay. acute. Uh, <laughs> isosceles. Not yet. Right? <laughs> just, just, rhombus? Not, yeah. It's a rhombus. rhombus. Yeah, this is a rhombus, this is a rhombus, rhombus. movie. A rhombus this of philosophy. Uh, Cord is then going to go off on it because it's a journey. All these movies are like it's always you have a journey. to go off it's into the journey. wasteland. A journey of discovery. And there you will face certain trials. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, actually, he's not even supposed to do No, he's not. Mangord no. is supposed to do <laughs> Yes. yes. He's, he's Mangord now. Yeah. Mangord technically wins. Yes. The fight. Yeah. Roddy McDowell says he's our chosen champion. No one has ever come back from finding Zetan. Mm-hmm. Uh, and his magical book of all the knowledge in the world. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we keep sending, we keep training uh, guys at this fighting ring and then sending them off to go. How do we know it. this exists? We send them off into the barren wastelands and nobody ever comes back. We don't know why. It's like yeah. Sending people off into the wasteland. How do you know that Zaytan exists? Yeah. Right. Some dude wandered in from the desert is like, I know of a man and a magical book. Was that it? Uh, I don't know. Huh, probably. Huh, sounds a lot like modern I, religion, yeah, doesn't it? Doesn't sound familiar. Yeah. <laughs> this is like, yeah, we got to go and there we will find all the knowledge that we seek, but we have to live life and go on a journey and, you know, with the inner spaces ah, so, and all this other stuff. So Bruce Lee is teaching uh, self-reliance versus religion. That's what this movie's about. Oh, wow. You're giving a lot of but credit, Sean. self-reliance is his religion because like- yeah. uh, well, so Versus a Christian stuff, religion versus the Western- Religion. The West Maybe that's what makes it controversial. Religion. Maybe. Because at the very beginning, uh, the, I mean, like, if it is stating its intentions, like, right up front, Cord says to Roddy McDowell, you know, it's like, Roddy McDowell says, well, what school are you with? There's something like that. And he's like, I'm with no one. I am, you know, I taught myself. I am my own man. I don't listen to, you know. So it's that individuality, mm-hmm. right? Is This is what Cord represents. Yes. The individual in the world. And he is going to go and find out why he's supposed to be in the world. What his meaning is, what by what his reason for being here is. Am I on this or no? The room went silent. So I I'm just, not sure. I, I think, I think you're he, doing a lot of homework for this movie. I don't know. It feels more like he's just he's very uh, 
uh, all about himself and he just wants to know everything is the initial uh, reaction uh, I felt to Cord. He's like, he just wants to know everything in the world. He just wants to be like the best. Well, yeah. He's not going for self-discovery, it doesn't feel like, at the beginning. Because he's trying to reach physical perfection. Knowledge. Now he needs spiritual perfection to sure. go. Sure. <laughs> okay. Enlightenment. That's what we're asking, talking about. Yes. Enlightenment. Sure. As taught by the Buddha, who apparently exists in the alternate. Taught, uh, by, taught by the Buddha. By the Buddha. So the, off Cord goes Buddha. into the wasteland, and there he meets our first character. Played by David Carradine. The blind man. So this blind man uh, mm -hmm. is, uh, I just want to know if there actually is anywhere in documented history, the mm -hmm. guy who was blind, but is like the most badass fighter that you will ever meet in your life. Mm -hmm. That's true. I wonder that, if that is actually based off of any sort of reality of some sort, because it comes up a lot. It yeah. does. A lot. A lot. Even a lot. in recent movies, like Rogue mm -hmm. One. Yeah. Like that, it's still a thing we do. Yeah. Movies. It's like, if you're blind, you're somehow the, you know. Daredevil. Daredevil, The most yeah. badass yeah. fighter in the world. Zadowichi. Let's just all say it comes from Daredevil and leave it at that. Yeah, but Zadowichi was before that, the blind sword. Daredevil, thing. Colin. There's, Daredevil. Zadowichi has like 23 mm -hmm. movies. That's very true. Okay. I know, yeah, Daredevil is comic books. They fucking there. did this in the, the G.I. Joe cartoon movie in, what, 1980. <laughs> Jesus, really? Yeah. yeah. Ooh, snake eyes, he could see? No, 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 Jinx when she was training. Oh. Remember? Right. You always blind them yep. so they can, Arya yep. and Game of Thrones. And, exactly. Yeah, okay. Right. Mm -hmm. She had to go blind for All the time more. comes up. Jean-Claude Van Damme temporarily blinded in Bloodsport. <laughs> Eyes it is, wide open. It is a thing. Yeah. Yes. I can That's see right. nothing. But I can hear everything. And yeah. Somehow my senses are attuned, living without my sight, that I am a great fighter. Mm -hmm. I say this would be a, a very big disadvantage to a fighter, but, you know, whatever. Yeah, I, it's, it's kind of like in John Wick 2, how being a deaf assassin seems like right, a huge yeah, disadvantage. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a lot like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That one makes even less sense. I agree. Say, but, Apparently, yeah. this is the biggest advantage in the world. Like, if I was, like, an MMA fighter or something, I would just, like, gouge my eyes out and be like, I'm going to be the best <laughs> fighter in the world. Mm -hmm. This is how I've seen I'm it. I'm going to train to be the best. Yes. Yes. But especially with Daredevil logic, he basically talks about how he can see. It's just a different way of seeing. And, like, yeah. they go right. so far to say that in, the, in that story. Yeah, yeah, but Daredevil's different. He didn't train to be the... He was, like, uh, bathed in a chemical or something that yeah. gave him heightened he senses. Had, yeah, yeah. I think he lost his mm -hmm. eyes, but gained the spider sense. Yeah, yeah, and he's essentially. Cheating. Mm -hmm. This Agreed. guy, kinda. He shouldn't, yeah, kinda. the boy, the boy man out. in this movie had to fucking teach him the fucking bat sonar thing, like, right? You know himself. David Carradine's terrible at acting blind. He's really bad. David Carradine, we were saying he was a friend of Bruce Lee. He was also uh, he took so Bruce Lee was supposed to be in a show called Kung Fu. Right yep. here in America mm -hmm. after End of the Dragon and all that. But David Carradine became the character Kane in Bruce Lee's show. Mm -hmm. So it feels natural that, you know, after he's dead, we cast Kane from the Kung Fu in this movie. Because mm -hmm. yes. basically he's the same kind of guy, right? Mm -hmm. Wandering beggar type. Yeah. yeah. Out there dispensing wisdom. Of course. Yeah. Like uh, Plain some of his, uh, his wisdom that he espouses in this film. You, two you birds. Tie, you tie two birds together, and even though they have four wings, wings they, they cannot, cannot fly. fly. That's deep. Is it? Uh, yeah. You. Uh, uh, everyone is a, is taught the way they are accustomed to learning, which is actually very. That's actually true. That's like, that's that's, a that's thing. actually some yeah. of this stuff. I like when he said, "I'm like, all right, I got it. I'm with you." <laughs> a I lot understand. of times, though, he just like. It's not deep. He or, took a lot of times. He would take whatever you say and flip it around, and say it back to you, like right. it was something deep when it, right. it really wasn't. Which is just a good uh, diversion tactic at some mm -hmm. point. Yeah. yeah. Where are you going? Where are you going? Mm -hmm. Basically, what you do when you're ten. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is Eastern. This is what ph yeah. Eastern philosophy is based. Uh, they the were just stopped short of, a of going like. I know you are, yeah. but what am I? Yeah. 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 Essentially. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which I think happened in this movie at some point. At some point, point <laughs> Western like philosophy did. just adds your mom to everything. There was a there was a, a thing like you're a fucking flute or something. They yeah, said yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We were just like, wow, we're really getting <laughs> really getting down into it, boys. Let's try a little harder. Yeah. Well, he learned. So the blind man, he sees the blind man fight uh, like a you know twenty guys and you know beats them all for so, some twisting apples. 
That's the first thing he sees him doing. I think he goes to see him after. Like he's he? like, oh my god, this guy's like an amazing fighter, and I, obviously I have to learn yeah. from him. He tries to find him, and then eventually he does find him, and that's the apple scene. Yeah, he sees him fight first. Dude, twist an apple. Yeah, in half. remember in the in clean. the ruins of the the tombs of the end. Dead or whatever. What, what did we watch? Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Tombs of the Blinded. Of the blinded. That one, yeah. Yeah, right. He fights those He fights those dudes. guys, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. This movie <laughs> is filmed, we said, where? Israel. Israel. Tel- Israel. Tel Aviv and somewhere else, but Slash all in Israel. Spain. So there's a lot of ruins, a lot of really dry desert, mountainous yeah. vistas, oceans. Yeah. You know, yeah. Off the crags. Craggy some, rocks. Some crags. Yeah, around. rocky terrain. Very yeah. much so. Some agro crags. <laughs> well, he meets. Who's the first? Uh, so he's basically going to go through. Glowing a, rock. He's going to go through a series of trials, right? Because that's uh, the whole thing. You have to suffer in order to. You got to learn from all of these, uh, you know, things that you encounter before you reach enlightenment. So the first one that he meets is what? Monkeys. But you say monkeys. I think that's a generous. <laughs> Description. That's, yeah, I don't, audience, I don't think you know what I mean when I say monkeys. It's They're monkey, the, monkey creatures. <laughs> monkey men. It is a person wearing like a chunk of burlap over their body, like yeah. a poncho, and a crude monkey mask. Yeah. Yes. That's but it. A mask that is their face. I feel like, <laughs> like it's supposed to be like their head is a monkey. Well, no, yeah. the, the the minions, the monkey minions yes. that are all yeah. Yeah. bouncing around, and they're like wearing the masks. They're like bad Planet of the Apes masks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like, mean, were Planet of the Apes good? Planet of the Apes oh, yeah, masks? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they were pretty decent. So. They were pretty Oscar decent. Winning. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's like you ever you ever like put a latex mask in like a storage bin and it gets like folded over on itself and then you try to like take it out later and open it up and it's kind of like stuck to itself yeah. so it has like weird creases and stuff yeah. yeah that's what all these masks look like like they've been shoved in an attic for 30 years and yeah. we're dusting them off like I, I, if you told me that this movie was loosely based around someone finding these masks and making up a story <laughs> around them <laughs> yeah yep. like- well, I'd I believe you. I would believe you. But Asian filmmakers, specifically like Chinese filmmakers, have like this thing. Okay, so this is where I'm showing my ignorance. But the Monkey King is like a big deal over there in their mythology. And I don't know what the fuck it is, but it shows up in a lot of, uh, you know, martial arts films. Mm. There is a movie. I think Jet Li is probably in a movie called The Monkey King. I think this is actually a thing. All right. So. Yeah. Monkey King. Look it up. That's a big deal. So I don't know if it's a, 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 a positive or negative thing, but in this movie, there is a, apparently a Monkey King. Mm-hmm. Also, also played, played by David Carradine. Right. Because, I mean, why not? <laughs> this is the Bruce Lee role. This is the role Bruce Lee would have played. He would have played the blind man, the Monkey King, and a few other characters. You don't think he would have been like the hero going through? The- no, he was going to be the... He would have been that character. That was the one he wanted. Do you know that for sure? Because yes. I, I believe you. If, yeah, no, I know yeah, yeah. that's for sure. That was the role he would have played had they yeah. actually made this movie. It seems kind that of That makes villainous. sense to me. Because David Carradine... I mean, he's, he's teaching lessons, but he, he gets to play all of them, and I guess they were trying to go for until we got to, like, David Carradine sand Jesus or whatever he's doing out there. <laughs> <laughs> Is regular Jesus not a sand Jesus? I mean, it's very true. <laughs> hippie Jesus, as it were, although hit Jesus is a hippie. Yeah. So. yeah. Uh, it's it's like it's like it's like if we want to say the real Jesus had a cult with his disciples. This is Jesus taking a cult because of the money. Yeah, yeah, right. that's he's the just difference. Like, I can make he's, some money off he this shit. A, he right. started like a yeah. pyramid scheme. Yeah, and just yeah. Like fucking hang out. Wait, which one are you talking about? Uh, uh, okay, so basically we're saying that David Carradine plays multiple characters in yes. this movie throughout the movie. He is all of the trial characters. Yes. Basically, he yes. plays a he plays the the guy with the flute who you know is. Teaching the, the blind man. The yeah. blind man. Then he's uh, the next Monkey time. Monkey King. And then after that, he's uh, the... Uh, orgy guy. Orgy guy. Shang Sha. Shang Sha. Shang Ka. Who has a little tent city out King-sha? in the middle of nowhere. Shang Sha? Shang King Sha? King Sha? Shang Ka. I'm going to go with you. Yes. Yeah. I don't know. To, I don't yeah. know. Shang Sung. Um, um, but then, before he meets him... Well, no, but I mean, just to I mean, clarify this, it's like, okay. so, and then at some point. Because there's something also, we definitely have to talk oh, we're about. Com- we're coming back. Oh, we'll oh yeah. That. Okay. But he's also playing uh, he, he's, did, he's, did he he's play, Desert he Jesus. He play- Desert Jesus, yeah. Well, isn't Desert Jesus just uh, the blind man? Can, they like, all later are. On? Well, I know that, but isn't he just out in the middle of the day? Like, he shows up at the. Yeah, he's like, he's Orgy Jesus. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah. Orgy Jesus. Is that the one you're talking about? <laughs> yes, or, or Orgy Jesus. Jesus. Oh, okay. Jesus. So yeah. Ching, Ching Sung or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Orgy okay. Jesus. Yeah. 
All right. Will he for, shall be known for here on out. <laughs> Orgy Jesus. We are all going to hell. Yeah, yeah. probably. <laughs> or Most Jesus. Likely. Well, we were trying to figure this out. Or Jesus I mean, is going to have a lot of questions Jesus. for us. We're like, come on, man. Orgy Jesus. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. That's all I could think of at the time. Hey, we didn't write this movie. No, here's not. That's I didn't true. make it. Yeah, that's I'm true. just trying to interpret this shit. Yeah, that is Can I go true. in? <laughs> Please? Yeah, well, he goes to, uh, he, well, he has to fight the Monkey King to get past yep. him. This is a fantastic martial arts sequence, uh, hitherto unknown or unseen in the annals of you should, film history. You should stop saying that. Well, because I don't get it. Uh, it was just like, <laughs> what the fuck? You know, it's like there's an exhibit, like there's a human guy there who I assume is one of the previous fighters who's on right. the quest to find the book, yes. who fights the Monkey King, and then uh, Yor fights the Monkey King. Mm-hmm. And then he go. He doesn't kill him or anything. He no, just, he just beats he him laughs. into submission. <laughs> oh, he's laugh. And God damn his on. laugh. And he he's one of those actors that does his laughs for like three beats too long. It's like, yeah, we got it. You don't need to keep going with it. And he just keeps going. Yeah. He walks out of scene still laughing. And yeah. then yeah. walks into the next scene and still laughing. Because <laughs> I think he's supposed to be achieving like, oh, I understand. Like, and then this is all a joke or something. Like this is some high. He's reaching yeah. enlightenment mm-hmm. one step on the ladder right. at a time, and at the completion of each one, it's a hearty the, laugh. It's the, <laughs> it's the friends we made along the way, Colin. Yeah, that's, that's the true meaning of this whole story. Well, speaking of friends, he meets along the way. After yeah. leaving the Monkey King, he comes across <laughs> a man in the desert. Mm-hmm. What's uh, this man doing in the desert? He's in a I'm giant pot of oil. He is. Uh, Eli Wallach. Mm-hmm. Uh, Eli Wayne, Wallach. Wayne? I, I still can't I'm believe it. Sure. I it's still either, can't believe it. Yeah. From uh, The Magnificent Seven and yeah. the... Uh, Good, the Ben, the Ugly. Good, the and from he's, Studio 60. He's soaking in a... Well, so it looks like... like Because when we see him, we're like, well, either he's taking a bath yeah, in a just, big he's vat... He's just having a sauna. Or he's about to be cooked, right? They're like They packed him in there and the fruit and vegetables come next. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, like in those old Bugs Bunny commercials. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, just fire. like that. But it turns out he's soaking in a big pot of oil Mm -hmm. out in the middle of the desert. Because he's also trying to reach enlightenment in a slightly different way than our main character. (laughs) How's he doing it? He's trying to... uh, uh, Dissolve his dick. I was going to try and make it a little more philosophical, but (laughs) yeah, that's that's what he's trying. He's he's trying to disconnect himself from the urges that tie him to this earth. Right by self mutilation by, by dissolving his dick in oil. Yeah, there we go. yeah because he yeah if he combined he, them he <laughs> was achieving enlightenment but then the pleasures of the flesh tempted him yes. and so if he just figures if he uh, dissolves his dick away to to nothing he will reach it and like, the legs that carried it yeah that's right because it carried it to all these temptations so sure, sure, sure. all right I'm not sure of the film's philosophy are we pro uh, dissolving the dick or not uh, I understand the philosophy behind it. The, Ooh, his character or uh, what? His, his character's reasoning for wanting to, pardon the word, sever that connection. <laughs> 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 the process in which he's doing it, I do not agree with. Though it's probably the best way to do it. Are you serious? Maybe. Get some fucking willpower, man. Holy shit. Have control well, over yourself like a goddamn adult. Yeah. I don't, well, no, he's, but he's saying that even, you th- even you the fact You think being in a vat of oil for 10 years, 10 years is the best way to do it? And yeah. He's, and he's almost there. So having... having well, look, uh, I'm not going to cut it off. I'll tell you that. No, he's so. saying having <laughs> earthly thoughts at all. If you just remove the whole, you know, it's like, well, then you're you know, some one step close. You can devote your head to uh, spiritual matters. Right. But I don't know if the movie endorses that because uh, uh, your clearly the cord cord uh, oh. doesn't. I don't. Right. Think he thinks him a fool. Yeah. And he <laughs> and yeah. walks out of scene. Yes. <laughs> Uh, leaving Oscar-winning actor Eli Wallach <laughs> to, to sit in his dick-dissolving juice <laughs> in the desert. <laughs> like three minutes, Eli Wallach is in this movie. Oh, but he acts his set. ass it's off. The I'm like, best. Yeah. this is oh, the best actor in this movie. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. But like, why? Why? Just yeah, why? Why? why did he do this? Why? Oh, this is like the uh, the, the Rat Pack of... of the martial arts era. I don't know. They were just all friends. Is this? Did you look into this? Was Eli Wallach a student of Bruce Lee? I don't think it was a student. Was but friends. Who was he friends with? All of them. All the of who? Who made like it? Bruce Lee. James who, Coburn. He was it. in the Magnificent Seven with James right. Coburn. We're looking for a connection, maybe that they were. I don't know of any official connection, but I mean, why else would he come and fucking do this? 
Unless well, he's just like, I agree with this script and this philosophy. No, paychecks. no way. I mean, how much are you getting? How much could he have gotten paid right. to do that? Well, that's what I'm saying. This is maybe a prestige They gotta be movie. friends, right? They gotta all be friends. In 1978, this could have been like uh, they thought this was actually going to be a thing. Sure. Like this was like we're devoting actual resources. We've got screenwriters and actors and talent and all that stuff that and you know oil. is respectable, <laughs> uh, both behind the camera and in front of it, and so. Yeah. Wow. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's put it this way. He's got to be friends with someone. Otherwise, I have no idea why. You he's know, there's yes. not a casting agent or something. Nah. Goes, Eli, uh, we got this part. He, he's like, I could do something with that role. <laughs> he did, though. He did. That's so maybe true. that was it. It was like, well, you know, maybe, maybe he and- just wanted the challenge of playing that for three minutes. Mm-hmm. Maybe. You never know. No, he was friends with somebody. I believe he was. Had to have been. Got to be. I'm sure Eli Wallach worked with Martin Scorsese. I'm like, I'm playing, but Martin Scorsese, I'm sure has seen this movie. Sc- Scorsese's seen everything. I sure, just want to yeah. imagine like a, you know, in between takes where you know, Scorsese is asking. Yeah. <laughs> what was your motivation for, <laughs> for the man so who how, dissolved How did himself? that happen? How yeah. did you get in the so, yeah, circle of mine? Yeah. Um, okay. Well, so, that's it. He just, he's like, yeah, you just cut it off. And then he immediately moves to the orgy tent. Now, mm-hmm. mm. orgy Jesus. Well, this is where we find out that uh, Court has taken a vow of celibacy, mm-hmm. right? For no good fucking no reason. reason. Yeah. He was never told he had to do that as part of these trials. It's something he chose to do because mm-hmm. in the search for spirituality, right? Mm-hmm. He is uh, keeping like a priest. He's mm-hmm. keeping himself on the straight and narrow. So the next step is to then tempt him. You know, of he's course. the opposite of Conan. Conan. Would have been fucked like, everything. Oh, yeah, I would say most over. sword and sandal Conan. stuff that everyone's fucking. Oh, yeah. Conan would have been there for like five years. It's just like, oh shit, what was I doing? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He would have been at the bottom of the pile yeah. of, uh, of bodies. <laughs> yeah. We keep saying there's an orgy in this movie, but there really isn't. But it sure as hell felt like there was going to be one. This yeah. is the only time there wasn't an orgy happening in this place. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. feel. It was like, because everybody's outside, there's a bunch of fucking going on. Maybe. This is a PG-rated movie, right? There were like some rolling around, though, on the ground with yeah. some couples that they showed. There were rated, definitely this is like... rated R. Oh, is it rated R? Really? Is it... We don't why? Know why? For what? For. It, it's, one, it's so old, it doesn't say. There's some bare asses. That's what... There's... Austin Powers nudity <laughs> in a scene there that's is. coming up. Yeah. There yeah. is. That was so maybe creative. that was risque. For the the violence is so graphic. There's the, I was going to say, there's no blood in this movie just, at all, it's, right? It's uh, Eli Wallach. I Besides when he hits that. that kid in the face. Yeah, he hits that's it. He hits the kid in the face and he pulls out. And he doesn't. He just injures the, the one fighter in the stomach and he's bleeding. But you don't really see a lot yeah. of it. No. Somebody, slap someone, a child. Gets, someone gets like a Chinese star in the forehead. Yeah. There's a little blood there. Doesn't feel like that happened so quick, so too, that it's quick. like, wait, what? So quick. And maybe because there were a lot of kid followers of Bruce Lee, and you know, that they just were like, we don't want kids emulating what they see. Any but there's that. not even a lot of fighting in this movie. Mm-hmm. Like, especially if you're considering this a martial arts movie, no, there's really not there's, any. There's a little tournament, like one on one tournament every place that he goes. That yeah. is the, the thing. The, the, but man, the time between those tournaments is. Yeah, there's just a long. lot of walking and a lot of running. At a certain point, chasing. there's a lot of running and chasing. Yeah. Big, a nice little big chunk right in the middle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I say nice. I don't mean that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It felt very much like a Monty Python movie. Yeah. Yeah. You're thinking of uh, I think the. Uh, they said when they rewrote Quest for the, or the it was Holy Grail. Slightly yeah. rewritten by a few people. Um, they took out uh, other scenes of violence. And put in more for humor, so I think that's why so we get intentionally wow. supposed to be funny. Intention, there's some stuff that's intentionally supposed to be more humorous than where it should have been violent in the other versions or in Bruce Lee's version. Huh. More violent. I didn't get that. Uh, I have a feeling that big uh, running around scene where they're being chased by the guys on horses for like ten minutes mm-hmm. uh, was a big part of it. I thought this was like unintentionally funny. I didn't. I think know that most it was like, of it is. Uh, so you're saying, but so when they're saying humor now, this is like the you know because everybody laughed at it, but they're actually saying it was intentionally. They were trying to have like it's, Eli Wallach's it, character was supposed to be funny. I think so. I mean, come on, that's kinda, <laughs> right. Yeah, that <laughs> comes across as funny, and I think purposefully. Okay. Because uh, that's the humor. Because Cord about. thinks he's a fool, so I think we are supposed to look at him as a fool. He's dissolving his bottom half. Like I think we're supposed to look at that as funny. Yeah, no, obviously I'll, it's ridiculous. I'll agree with that. I yeah. think we all laughed at that point. Yes. So. Okay, there it is. Well, after the orgy tent that doesn't happen, he's tempted by a uh, woman, Tara. Tara. Yes, uh, the rose. 
That's right. That he's been searching for. Because he had a vow because of celibacy. Because they blinded us with that fucking jewel on her forehead for like 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But that's the thing. He sleeps with her, and we're like, well, did he just fail his test? We don't know. He wakes up the next day. He's in the desert. He falls asleep next to her, wakes up in the desert. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She's nailed to a tree. We're like, what in the fuck happened? Well, I think he failed, man. Yeah. Pretty sure he failed. Pretty sure that's a big sign of failure. But his when he meets the blind man again, he basically says, like, I, a year ago, I took a vow of chastity, and I broke it last night. And then I realized that, like, I never should have taken it in the first place. Or something to that effect where it was like, what? Well, he's talking about possessing your love and the oh, the, that and the, the the embrace can be a strangling embrace of yeah, your love. He asked her to like you know, right to, to marry, marry him or right or there. How can you possess something when you don't even possess yourself? Yeah, these are questions. I mean, exactly. how do you answer? I still that don't stuff? understand why she had to die. Yeah. I don't either. She got punished for something she was told to do and had no choice in saying. She's a non-character in saying. this. This is yeah. all about him. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I know. But like, but even but within the logic of the movie, what was the reason she died? Was she even to real? Punish him. Was it's she all real? about his journey. Yeah, but who who killed her then? Uh, I don't well, and why. Duder, a- uh, Ching- or Jesus. Jesus. Uh, yeah, he does admit. This is David Carradine mm-hmm. with the Fu Manchu mustache. Yep. Yeah, he does admit to killing her. I think in the he later does. right. Yeah, because they. So meet he him said, again. "Go fuck her," and then yeah, yes, gives, you says, did it. Take my wife. Now I'm going to kill her. Well, yeah, and because you, all of you did exactly what I told you to, so I'm going to kill it, kill her. Well, then he was like, he's like, I killed her. And then fucking Cord was like, no, I killed These her. two hands. <laughs> These two hands. And we're like, what the fuck, fuck is happening yeah, here? I, because I, this I still, doesn't even make objective oh, but sense. But I, I still maintain, I don't think she was real. I, I don't think she was real I don't real think any of it was real. I, and yeah, exactly. It was a mirage. Yeah, but, well, I mean, like the whole thing, the fact yes. that David Carradine is playing every single yeah, character is telling real. us that like this is not an objective reality. But, right. And this then, is a, a vision quest. It's, but as like a viewer, it's, it's fucking stupid to like set up these challenges when we don't know what the parameters of his journey are. You know what I'm saying? Like, like the chastity thing that should have been set up way earlier. That should have been like on your trials, you can't do X, Y, and Z. And mm-hmm. then, so when we, he comes across those temptations, we know what's happening. And yeah. instead it's exactly. like, he drops that he's like his chastity thing, right. As he's entering orgy town, you know? So, yeah, <laughs> Because we, I mean, mm, orgy town. <laughs> but, but you can't figure out like what. Okay, so if this is supposed to be, you know, in order for this to work, the audience has to understand what the guy is le- learning, right? Uh, exactly. Yeah. If the whole goal of this is to, you know, I mean, I, I assume the 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 philosophy here is that basically through self reliance, self discipline, basically not having, uh, I mean. Because the philosophy is like up is down, down is right. You, know, mm-hmm. you can't have any kind of belief in anything. You just kind of exist. Right. You're like a stone in the water, and the stone is always there, and the water just breaks over it. It wasn't very good. <laughs> good enough, man. The, stone, the water runs over the stone. Bruce Lee does like his I mean, water they're all, metaphors. Yeah. Yeah. They're not all going in fortune jam. cookies. Yeah. Man. You're it's a reed in the yeah. river, and you keep on. Okay. Yeah, because I didn't have a beer. You can't step in the same piece of water twice. That's a, yeah, it comes out of nowhere. That You're like, profound, dude. Bad. Of water. Yeah. Yep. The Just mo- a piece. This movie is throwing you philosophy at you Just a piece. all the time. Why would you want to step on the same piece of water more than Well, water? that's what I was thinking, because, like, uh, Cord is a- like, this is how the scene starts. Cord's, like, you know, uh, bathing himself, and then he's like, ha ha, like a kid does. And he's, like, standing there staring at himself in the water or whatever, and a voice says, you can't do it. Yeah. He's like, I can't do what? You can't step in the same piece of water twice. And I expected him to go like, I wasn't trying, trying to do right. that. <laughs> and then he's just like, ah. and then he follows him again. Yeah. It's like, wow, what are, you guys are, you had a weird relationship. Yeah. I don't get it. Was that just, yeah. Was that just Bruce Lee misinterpreting the, the whole, like you can't swim in the same river twice. Cause the river is always changing. Mm-hmm. Is that, is, that him, is, lost that, is that him issue? misinterpreting that? Like, because I feel like that's what it is. A couple other people, so we can't peg it down to Bruce Lee. Right, well, well I'm just, someone should have <laughs> caught that yeah, piece of water. It's people piece who of are water. familiar with, because I'm assuming that's it. It's right. Story by Bruce Lee, and then and James, James Coburn, Coburn, who was who was a friend, I assume close friend, yeah. in his classes and understood his philosophy. And then Sterling Sullivan was the screenwriter who was going to shape this into. Right. 
like an actual, you know, like film. You script. got a bunch of shit here. Yeah. Put in How can we here. make a, you know, beginning, middle, and end, and have themes and subtext and things that you know thread through the whole thing? Right. I think they failed. <laughs> but <laughs> I assume that's the the goal. I just think that like everybody was stoned, probably like in the making of and the conception yeah. of this film. I don't know. Jeff Cooper looks like a dude who's never done a drug in his life. <laughs> they cast the most straight <laughs> arrow guy. <laughs> that looks like the most straight fucking. I'm Cord. Who doesn't? That dude doesn't get it. No. I, I don't know what that. There's that nothing is. going on upstairs, man. No. no. That guy. Nothing. But somehow <laughs> this is the physical and spiritual specimen that we should all aspire to, because Cord does make it all the way through the Forbidden Lands and uh, you know passes the trials and ends up meeting Christopher Lee, who's Zaytan, mm-hmm. holding court over a bunch of other stone-looking monks who don't do anything in this little uh, monastery by the sea. Yeah. And uh, he's been guarding the book. And he's like, no, you can. we don't have to fight. You can see the book. Go ahead. And so Cord opens it. What does he see? This inside? is how I know God isn't real. <laughs> the scene right here. <laughs> wow. Um, really? You hadn't even seen this movie I, before tonight. I know, but maybe this. I mean, I, to be fair, I knew that going into this movie. <laughs> okay. But this, this reaffirmed. Re- yeah, yeah. yeah. like, I'm all ears for um, this. This is going to be. Wow. Good. That's. <laughs> There was ever a reaction to a movie I made? <laughs> Somebody saying like, "Now I know God." I know that's yeah. what I'm saying. <laughs> would, I would just be like, "That's the best yeah. review of this movie ever." I think so. Uh, this book full of the all the world's knowledge, infinite knowledge. <laughs> you know, it's it's a book of mirrors, man. It, you are the mm-hmm. person, as it. But yeah. in this I told you, case, it's book. only cord. Is it only cord, or no, is there anyone who looks at the book? Anyone who makes that journey and ends up being able to look into the book. So it is just it a book of mirrors. It's not like a magical yeah. book that shows you your face. It's no. literally no, it's a, book a book of, book of mirrors. mirrors. That is yeah. even worse. <laughs> than I, thought yeah. it was. I thought it was like a magical book that like no. whoever looked at it no, like, no, 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 no. Yeah. Michaela, have yeah. you never looked in the Bible? It's just all mirrors. <laughs> have you never, have you never looked? I don't have a reflection no. when I look in the Bible. It's like a vampire oh, thing. There's nothing there. No. <laughs> yep. You look in the book, and the book is pages of mirrors. And so the uh, thought process here is that the universe and all infinite knowledge that you're ever going to know is contained within you. Which mm-hmm. is inherently not true. <laughs> it's just incorrect. Well, that's what that I'm saying not- to, to most of the stuff in this movie. You know, it's like this is a rock, and is it a rock? <laughs> yes, that's a rock. Yeah. Like I can hit you with it. Mm-hmm. It's a rock. You know, but whatever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but that seems to be the philosophy of this. Is like you know, no, it may not be a rock. I don't know. What do you? What think a, it is? What a fucking yeah, what do you anticlimactic think it is? Like, end of this journey. Jesus. Christ. Well, he also it does on get the way really there, like. Oh, that's it. Then the movie's over the end, yes. after that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh no, they're they're playing flutes on a mountain and all that stuff, and and really going for it too, just dancing. <laughs> yeah, because he you inherits know, the flute. Because you have to know he's playing the flute, and the only way to do that from a distance is like, are you got to motion bigger? Yeah, you know they told them that because they were doing like a helicopter shot. Right. They're like, you got to yeah. go really big with it. We got to see you playing the flute. Bigger, yeah. Somebody's yelling this from a helicopter. Well, there was a scene before this. If we can backtrack, because sure. I mean that basically is the end of the movie. They uh, they play the flute and dance. Oh, well, uh, uh, Cord becomes the inheritor of the flute. Yeah. Tries Christopher Lee tries to be like he's like set me free. Yeah, yeah. This, you this become little, the keeper. There's a little me- something menacing about that because Christopher Lee is like, please, yeah, set me free. Yeah, which, I, yeah. Is, which is a whole thing. Like, let's, like, let's explore oh, he's, that. Like, he's fucking trapped. I want like, this story. He's, yeah, yeah. Like, he's trapped. Yes. Yeah. He found enlightenment and is like, I want. I don't want it. this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, There's your story. Like, I know what truth is. There is no truth, and I am stuck and here. And it's fucking it bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. And he wants to like go back because then he reveals that like many people have gotten here and they've stayed. Or they've gone back and become teachers, or the uh, trials of which you go through to get here. And apparently, the the blind the flute blind, player yeah. is also yeah, also made it there. And he's just like fuck that book because that's why mm-hmm. I think when they come outside, and, did you look in the book? Yes, and then they embrace and like, ha ha! I know we both know like the the truth of the world. Right. Mm-hmm. I have a question though. Oh, when? just one. Well, yeah. Okay. Right now, when did the blind man go blind? Was he not able to look at the book? Was he blind when he started his journey? Did was he blind after? Uh, I'm very I don't curious care. about that. <laughs> <laughs> he, well, I'm we curious. well, I think he had his. I think he had sight when he completed his own journey because he. That's what he says earlier on. He's like, 
Um, he's like, you've you've been here before. You've made this journey before. Mm-hmm. So I'm pretty sure he had his sight when he made the journey. Okay. Makes sense. There's a whole he knew sequence. Was a beautiful boy. Yeah. Yeah. Th- this is the sequence that we're talking about that goes on for like 40 minutes. It's not that long, but this the third hour of the movie. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Where, it, you know, Cord is following the blind man again. And the blind man says, okay, I'll let you follow me, but you can't ask any questions of anything that I do. Yeah. And so the blind man proceeds to borrow a boat, then break it. He starts rebuilding a wall without seeing it. And he smack, he breaks a, the nose of a kid just by walking up to him. All while Cord asks 5,000 questions. Yeah. Why? Why'd you do that? What was that for? How come? Yeah. <laughs> There's probably 5,000 versions of that you can do. I mean, that's what he did in this movie. Yeah. He's and just constantly questioning him. Well, finally, the guy turns around and we're like, fine, I will tell you, which I always love when they say, don't ask, you know, but eventually I will tell you without yes. there being any consequences. Right. And his reasoning is like basically from some omniscient point of view where I'm like, this guy is God, right? It's like, I'm doing shit that you can't understand. So don't ever question the way of the will, you know, because I knew that the boy was a tyrant and he was going to grow up to be, you know, a tyrant. So I broke his nose. So that way, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll nip that in the bud. Now, you know, so there's somebody stronger than him. Then <clears throat> I broke the, uh, the boat. So the soldiers that were following us couldn't take that back and kill the guy who owned the boat. And it's like, what the, f- <sighs> I think this stuff, I'm exasperated. I think this stuff keeps happening, which I think it's on a loop. I think the, the they'll always come across the beautiful boy. Yes, because none of it's real. It's right. like the fucking well, that's mirage. What I'm like, yeah, I think it's, it's none it's, of it's, it's real. All part of it, like he yeah. always because well, he did this once and he didn't break the boat, and the fucking guys went over and killed the fisherman and the dude. This is like they filmed a parable out of the Bible or something, right? If you just yeah. filmed it literally, Jonah and the whale or something yeah. like that, yeah. and just said, "Here you go," out of Bruce Lee's own like <clears throat> personal, yeah, out yeah. of his personal book. Mm-hmm. The Book of Bruce, which apparently is just a mirror reflecting himself. <laughs> oh shit! As the whoa. Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa! Meta dimensional. There it is. <laughs> is it. The, that beautiful boy fucking D plot that gets dropped in in like the third act was like. So I'm, I was like, this oh is God. like the fucking like, plot of Looper when they're trying to take out the Rainmaker before he turns into the Rainmaker. I was like, but yeah. they, but like they're, but. Because this whole plot happened in a matter of like five sentences, it was like, wait, so because that kid's really attractive, he's going to be an asshole when he grows up? So we just should just nip it in the bud now. Well, only, I mean, he was already an asshole. Only Cord says he was a beautiful boy because of the idea that his, now his face is broken yeah. after, you know, do what else do have? So you it's break his nose scene. and he won't be a dick when he grows up. Right, yeah. He, what? They walk into this village and everybody's like, oh, it's the blind man or whatever. They turn around like they know him, yeah. right? And the boy comes up to him. And he just fucking biffs him on the face. And then his parents kind of take him back like, well, that is what, you know, it was uh, ordained was going to happen. I mean, it's very mystical. And uh, <laughs> they're also like <laughs> smiling like, yes. yeah. And yeah. Somebody slapped this some bitch. <laughs> yeah. But that's all you really get out of it. So only later is the explanation like, well, I knew he was going to be Hitler later. You know, I mean, I yeah. Yeah. hit him in the face. Is which, which, if place. he's gonna be that, he said he's gonna be like a tyrant later. If he's gonna be a tyrant, just fucking kill him. Why? Why are you break wasting time just breaking his nose? All I say, if anything, is, it's gonna make him more resentful. It just right? gives us carte blanche to just start smacking kids. I know yeah, because I'm I, fine I, with you can always just be yeah. like, "Have you seen Circle of Iron? I just did you a fucking favor." But this is yeah. what I don't understand off. about the philosophy. If it's supposed to be like you're not supposed to kind of take any action, you just react. But that was a specific, like proactive. You, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, okay, it's okay if you do it. But I'm not supposed to do it. Mm-hmm. What is the fucking point of? Okay, I'm sorry no, if it, I'm just dense. No, no, listener. I'm with you. No, yeah, I'm with you. <laughs> yeah, no, no. <laughs> but this is a very uh, metaphysical movie. It's very heavy. <laughs> <laughs> Yet also light. <laughs> <clears throat> Bewildering. I'm going to use that word again because it seems no, very that's it. appropriate. That's it. That's the word. Yeah. Uh, is there any other scenes that you guys uh, are, are thinking about that you're like? Because I'm, I'm actually sitting here thinking, I got a handle on this, and I can explain it to you. Go ahead, hit me. I'll tell you what it means. Oh, yeah, you're that confident? As your oracle. <laughs> well, no, but this should be fun. <laughs> How many horses do you think died making this movie? Holy shit. They were getting knocked on their backs constantly. There was some pretty good horse uh, stunts. Uh, I didn't like it. There were ho- horses being punched. <laughs> running, in, running into each other. Being he, roundhouse, roundhouse kicked. kicked a horse. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need you to explain to me the 
the moment when he collected the two frogs and <laughs> laid them next to him and then just laid down and went to sleep. I'm going to uh, need you to explain I think it was, that. I think it was the noise. The, the frog noise. Like if you have to out. sleep with a fan? Yes. <laughs> like that. <laughs> so you don't, but it's so you don't hear the devil. Like yeah. that's, that, that's why. They're his white noise like machine. sleeping with a fan so you don't hear the devil. That's basically why he had the frogs next to him. Because I mean, there, there really are noise machines that play like... Animals yeah. have like sure. frog and noises and stuff. And so it's stuff, like so. that, like the yeah. rainforest. Yeah. I think that's exactly Fuck. why he picked them up, brought them next to him. He's just like, I need this noise to drown it out so I can sleep. <laughs> Guarantee that's it. Yeah, they might, that's I will take good. that answer. Well, I was going to, I had a better Oh, right. no, please. Oh, please, oh, please. Do. Let's hear it. Sorry. Please Let's hear it. Let's hear it. What do you think it's it crack means? No. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. No. Colin, you can't no, answer no, a question no. with a question. Colin understands this movie. That's this whole fucking movie in a nutshell. Holy shit. Yeah. Oh, Colin's also levitating right now. Oh, my God. Yes. Oh, um, All right. How about, how about when uh, we get the... He's also wearing denim from how about, I just want to yeah. say this. How about Canadian when we tuxedo. get the fucking night vision and he, and he encounters the, the cat oh person? My God. Oh, yeah. That well, was he, a figured, good, he figured that, that out right too. off the bat, uh, that it being death. That was death? That, it said in the credits, too. That's oh, David, is it? That's David Carradine as, as death. death. He's the wow. David Carradine leopard is man. the cat person. Wow. There's yeah. a scene where Colin's it, there. He it, is there. You are in it. It was like shot with some kind of, uh, I mean, like primitive infrared camera, yeah. which isn't like what we know now is green night vision. This is sure. kind of, uh, I don't know what the hell. That I, wasn't shot with a specific camera. That's They turned a dial on the coloring. No, up I think that's something. what you do. No, no, no. Like, I saw the same shot they did in that was fucked up and supposed to be at night later on in another cut. They just cranked color well it's, it's very wacky looking very and there's a jaguar howl and then this guy who looks like black panther steps out of the he shadows really and is like and i assume that you know like you said it's david carradine again yes and we're like oh Didn't he's gonna need to be he's gonna fight a panther guy <laughs> because was. we need like a you know another like fantasy creature here and it ends up becoming a philosophical discussion instead of a fight with the panther man mm -hmm. where he's basically like uh what like i'm always there in the shadows and like and he's like, I'm ready for you. You can come whenever. Yeah. Death I liked is always it. there. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah, because it's dangerous being out there in the wilderness. No, on you, your journey of no, you are in the mind space of this movie. He, I, you are there. I really think he is. <laughs> you connected with this As movie. He sucks you did. Out his Colin. Peace pipe and, <laughs> yeah. Yep. That's, that's and why. And he puts on his loincloth. Colin and, has oh. been in a Zen trance this entire episode. <laughs> 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 no, I'm bewildered. I have no idea what the hell it is. I'm sure. It means something different to all of us, don't you see? This is the key to uh, we all take no, we're all take different journeys. We all face we're different all, trials. Yeah, we're all looking and seeing something different in the in the yeah. book, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Who was the guy? He like he approaches. Oh, it was uh, Changuska. I'm fucking orgy Jesus. Orgy Jesus. There we go. Uh, Mangord. Man, yeah, he sits down. Orgy. Cord sits down next to him, and says, uh, "You know, the guy introduces himself. I think, and he says, Cord says, peace." And don't wish that upon me. Something like that. Yeah. Peace. Ha <laughs> ha. I have no use for peace. I'm out here with the orgy thing. Like okay. <laughs> <laughs> not, not what he said. No orgy not actually no, happened. Are we are we explicit but on this? But like it, he's, they well, were he's happening. Also we not Jesus, but them. we're gonna go with orgy Jesus, all right? Yeah. There was we didn't it was see an orgy it. vibe. Yeah, we it didn't, was an orgy. We didn't like see I said, it, but this they, is they the were only happening. time yeah. the orgy was not happening. Yeah. He is the king of earthly pleasures. Yes. That guy did say he had like ten wives or something yeah. like yeah. that. He so has ten wives. He has parties every night. They have sparklers. I mean, that's you know pretty... that says orgy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There was he like was, fire breathing and shit too. Every orgy he I've was been the to. fucking grandmaster of this movie. Yeah. He yeah. was Jeff Goldblum and Thor Ragnarok, essentially. But eventually, and he, you know, Jeff Goldblum and Thor Ragnarok was having fucking orgies. They said he was. <laughs> they said, they, they did, said he was. Yes, he used true. that shit for orgies. It's very true. Oh yeah, we've yeah. unraveled the secrets of this film. I think hopefully that you've been with us on this journey and have uh, experienced your own enlightenment. But if not, we're going to explain it to you after the mailbag. So first of all, we're going to have to summon our mailman, Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Skin, the skin flute. flute. Oh, jeez. I knew son that was going to happen at some point. You knew point. it, but you set me up for it. <laughs> I knew it was going to happen. Maybe I secretly wanted it to happen. It's like somebody's going to make this joke. Skin flute. 
<laughs> All right. Well, we got to tell the good folks at home how they can get a hold of us on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. On Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. By Facebook. Sorry. By. Uh, <laughs> yep. Yeah. Okay. That's like, what, what? happens. Oh, I'm trying to do God. two things at once. By email. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show tonight. Uh, MF Mad. Who is the keeper of the keeper wall? Keeper of the oh, wall. No, somebody on the wall. Two people are on the wall, but Good number job, one, Sean. we have finally inducted Christopher Lee. Sir Christopher oh Lee, my future. About time. About time. time. Heavy metal rock star Christopher Bravo. Lee has right. been uh, inducted to the Wall of Fame because he was in. To do that, you have to be on three movies that we've covered on the Saturday. Night One Freak of them show. better be a Dracula movie. That's all I'm it saying. Is. Well, it's it is. Dracula, yeah. AD 1972. Okay. Mm-hmm. He was also in The Last Unicorn. He was oh. uh, the voice of King Haggard. Okay. All in right. both the English and the German version. Huh. Ah, that's pretty cool. Because that mm-hmm. guy speaks like five fucking languages. That's right. Or did. And, it's and about this, time. so that's three. Also, Anthony DeLongis is on the Hallway of Fame. Mm-hmm. He was uh, Morthond. That was the name we were looking uh-huh. for. Uh-huh. Not Mangord, Morthond. Uh-huh. Not Mangord. Like Mangord. Come on, Mangord. you at home, you'll excuse me for a minute. Mangord, Mangord's Morthond. Fine. Okay. All right, uh, Mangord is going in quotes under his name in the Hallway. <laughs> yeah. He was also Blade in Masters of the Universe. <gasps> He's Blade! Oh, my God! That means nothing. Yeah. I'm like, who is Blade? I saw that movie. We were covered. Masters of the Blade. He was the one with the swords. He had like the. That makes sense. He was the bald. <laughs> he was the bald guy. Okay. He he's, was also. He's like a big. Kano. Uh, nope. Different. No. Yep. Okay. He's like a big time like stunt choreographer with like sword fighting and stuff. Okay. I love Masters of the Universe. All right. <laughs> oh Jesus. He was also the voice of Zygon in one of my favorite 3D animated movies, Star Chaser: The Legend of Warren. Although I was listening to his voice, I couldn't pick it out. And he was Ketchum. In the movie Roadhouse. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Damn. Maybe he should be on the wall just for yeah. being in Roadhouse. Yeah. For being in proximity to Roadhouse. <laughs> Roadhouse takes you pretty far. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, about uh, Circle of Iron, tonight's movie, Jislam is the future. <laughs> Jislam? Jislam I'm is sorry. the future. <laughs> I'm sorry. I need to see the spelling of this. <laughs> Colin's so handing the mail to Sean right Jislam okay. is the future. That's, uh, that's, says... That's, that's, I, with this movie, I could have used a little more toe bell. <laughs> oh, I mean, uh, I still don't quite understand the point of the toe bell. Yeah. Blind man wears a toe bell. Why? So people know that he's there. They can see him. He's the yeah, one who can't see. He, he's the one who can't tell where yeah. other people are. That's the. Maybe like Daredevil, the toe bell is the source of the whole sonic uh, projection. Cool. Uh, if they would have explained that, that would have been. Uh, See, you know. Colin's in this movie. <laughs> yeah, you were in it, man. I'm sorry. Somebody else actually saw this movie. What? Yeah, Jislam is the future son. <laughs> I don't think that's right. <laughs> okay. Uh, so Grant <laughs> Jislam. Let's Jislam. Jislam. <laughs> can, is I, the can I see the spelling? Because <laughs> you said Jislam the first time. Jislam. What? How would you say that? I mean, it is Islam. Jislam. Jislam. Jizlam. <laughs> stop saying stop saying jizz. Stop saying jizz. I think that's what he wants us to say. Stop uh, it. Okay, so Grant Parrish said, uh, okay, so I don't understand this. He says, no one, nothing, than me, I have always found oh. Roddy McDowell to be incredibly sexy. Oh, you don't oh, get that? It's a meme it's format. A meme. It's, it's a meme. A meme. Like, no, nobody it's like nobody asked, joke. but you're putting that opinion yeah. out there. Oh, okay. Absolutely yeah. no one says anything yeah. but yeah. me. I've always thought I yeah. was sexy. I have well, an important yeah. opinion I need people to hear. Oh, yeah. right. Nobody asked, but I'm going to give my opinion on this. Uncle yeah. Colin. <laughs> <laughs> We're teaching you what memes are. Always oh. is in capital. So, I mean, does that help with the emphasis? Mm. I have always found Roddy McDowell to be incredibly sexy. Well, nope, yep. move on. Okay. Uh, <laughs> good for you. That's about, that's uh, that's, I mean, that's something, man. Be comfortable in your choices. Yeah. yeah. We're not going to judge. No. Well, about last week's episode, Forbidden World, B-Movie Poster Vault writes in and says, ran across this gem during a 24-hour movie marathon, fortunately fairly early in the show. It's perhaps the most winorski script Jim Winorski ever winorski <laughs> in that he thought, I like Alien, but it lacks something. Oh, that's right. Boobs. Lots and lots of boobs. It was a real cloud pleaser between the Gucci special effects of cast members making the worst decisions possible at any time, an utterly immobile alien, immobile alien puppet and of course the fact that the spaceship has room for a sauna i was concerned the scientist was going to kill off the cast through passive smoking before the creature 
<laughs> could though. I wish that was my wrap up because that's really, know. really good. That's, that's a really great yeah. synopsis. <laughs> I forgot we watched that movie. I did. I, <laughs> you I did, did too. a little, uh, re, uh, yeah. little review. On I did too oh, last yeah. week. Yeah. When you said Forbidden World, I was like, "What?" I was too. I was just like, "Was I here for that?" What movie was this? I don't remember. Literally that. last week. Like, oh, wow. Okay, so sure that one's not going to live forever in infamy. Sure it's just like, <laughs> yep. It's not like Beyond the Black Rainbow. A man, ah. Eunuch Spain. Right yep. soon says the best alien ripoff is Event Horizon or Species. I'm not sure either is a direct ripoff to qualify, but they both have similarities and both are good. Oh, Species like took the same poster and font yeah. and design and everything. They yeah. really wanted you to think that. And H.R. Giger. Yeah. 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 Right. Not, not Shocking Dark? That's not a... Uh, no. You stop it. <laughs> uh, about Kingdom of the Spiders. Uh, previous yes. week's episode, Jason Brown writes in, says uh, Kingdom of the Spiders was a local TV staple when I was a kid, I love it. Yeah, yeah that was a, it was a good time. Was a good one. I've actually been good. thinking. I think I want to rewatch it again. Pretty that soon. was fun. I bought the Blu-ray. Yeah, you did. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. He threw a child. It yeah. turns out he we have a good shot. Give me, a, give me a hammer now. <laughs> <laughs> so good. I, I really. It's better if you've been drinking. I'm just saying, so if you're a little good. buzzed when you watch that movie. Yeah, well, yeah. I really need to drive in to do a showing of that. Yeah. Like really bad. Yeah. That's, Oh, that's some good stuff. Yeah, that, that, that is a perfect drive-in movie. It is. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That was uh, so funny. Well, Muddy Funster writes in and says, all I remember about this film is the scene where Shatner's sitting, sitting in a diner because of some wacky shot composition. Tiny cars are driving into his ear. Ah. Uh-huh. <laughs> they have the perspective off on the shot. That's oh, amazing. That's funny. I have to go yeah, back and I watch that. I didn't notice, but I know what you're talking about. Yeah. That's funny. Oh, that's funny. I just didn't. Oh, when, yeah, when he goes to have lunch. When well, he's telling the story scene. about yeah. how he got the name Rack. Rack. Oh, my God. I didn't even notice that. Now I got to go back yeah. and watch Shit. it. Now yeah. we got to watch it again. <laughs> we were distracted by the stupid story. We missed oh. the best part of it. I was hoping for a good story about <laughs> yeah. why he's yeah, called the, Rack. The terrible yeah. story it was behind his name. Rack Hansen. Rack Hansen. It was just It was like just about playing pool, right? It was just his dad. Played yeah. his role and he's like Racko. So his brother, so guy, his Rack- brother, yeah. used to call him Rack- so dumb. Rack- and like, that's, that's that's oh yeah, the, that was yeah. the dumbest thing about that movie. It was. Wait, we got to make a correction. We said it was Shot Factory put out the Blu-ray. It was actually Code Red. Code so Red. Get, Good job, Code, Code Red. Red. Uh, Good job. Yeah. Uh, research at research at. There we go. Sorry. Says, geez, that final shot. Shizlum. Oh yeah. yeah. It's, of what King of the Spiders? Yeah. 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 It's pretty bleak. They did it. I would have killed for a sequel. To that. <laughs> oh, directed. It's by not too late. And it's not too late. It could yeah. still happen. Like they've been cocooned for forty years. Yes. And they just break out. And yes. Shatner's just old and shit. He's like, oh my god, <laughs> help me. We have to <laughs> help. Me. Uh, we have to make this movie, yeah. <laughs> please. We're gonna start the crowdfunding right now on SaturdayNightFreakShow dot com, uh, blogspot dot com uh, <laughs> about our movie, The Manitou. Mm. Oh, Michael yeah. Whitaker writes in and says, randomly out of the blue, the sta- radio station I listened to mentioned the Manitou mm. in reference to a news story about some guy pouring salt on the floor of a Walmart to get rid of demons. Oh, my God. Uh, Guarantee it was in Florida. I'm telling you. Like, yeah, but well, did yeah. anyone stick around to see if anything like birthed out of him? <laughs> it came back? out of his back. Because, <laughs> I mean, never know. Isn't that wild? The Manitou. Like, I, maybe it's a bigger thing than we thought it was going into it. Maybe. Because like everybody seemed to have seen that movie. And read more those people, books. Right. More people than I thought. Yeah. Maybe we're just on the outside of this. I, I, I think seems we were like on that it. one. All right. Well, Dom Cree wants to know, uh, hey, Sat Freak Show, when are we getting hard ticket to Hawaii asking for a friend? Holly and I have been talking about it a lot yeah, lately. So <laughs> it's, I've heard it's things coming. about this movie. We've yeah. been talking about it for a couple months. I will right. not yeah. look anything up because uh, fortunately we'll have another uh, Miami Connection <laughs> episode coming out of hard ticket to Hawaii. Well, yeah. I got to yeah. I got to say. Okay, so okay. I, at one point I did dip my toe into the Andy Sidaris like uh, oeuvre, right? Yeah. You might want to look at a movie called Malibu Express. Malibu, right. Malibu yes. Express. That's yeah. the other one. Yeah. Well, he's got like you can buy the Andy Sidaris collection. It's like sixteen movies. Damn. Yeah. Where he is just like spies and hot cars and naked women. I would say you could probably expect it. Wait, which one's the one with months. the rocket launcher? Hard ticket to Hawaii. It's coming up pretty soon. Is that hard ticket to Hawaii? Which one? What? Like, dude, rocket launcher. That was the one with the snake. The hard ticket to Hawaii has okay. a rocket launcher. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's yeah. the one. I'm it's on the p- cover. Yeah, this girl that holding one. On the cover. Somebody showed me that scene, mm-hmm. and I'm just like, yeah. Whoa. No, it is like yeah. it is the best follow up you could hope for for like a Miami Connection type yeah. vibe. So yeah. don't worry, it's coming down. It's like you get Magnum mm-hmm. PI and the A Team. 
Mm-hmm. But everybody's there's all naked women. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> all the naked women that were inferred in both those other things yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, are, are in, explicit yeah. in this Sidaris one. Movies. Okay, gotcha. Yep. It's coming. <laughs> well, there you go, Dom. Wishes do come true. So mm-hmm. now we're going to go around the room and find out what we thought about uh, tonight's movie, Circle of Iron. Colin! Hey, Colin. <laughs> hey, Sean. <laughs> what did you think about tonight's movie, Circle of Iron? What did you think about? <laughs> That's the only way done. we could start. That's, <laughs> That's his wrap up. Hang it up. Turn That's, it off. That's it. We're That's done. His Hang up on him. <laughs> um, Absolutely done. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, I just got to keep going. I was bewildered. Be- just fucking bewildered. Like, I wasn't entertained. I'll, I'll tell you that. You know, I mean, aside from some of the absurdity. Of, uh, you know, because I think Sean was telling us a story about how he uh, selected this movie for mm. us tonight was that somehow you got to watch the first like 20 minutes up till Eli Wallach in the <laughs> pot. And then you're like, I'm stop it right now. Saturday Night Freak Show. My buddy asked me about because um, he's listened to a few episodes of the podcast and he knows we do movies like this and whatnot. He's like, uh, I got a movie you'd like. And he handed me this a year ago. <laughs> and I, and, I, and it took me like eh, You've probably had your buddy's movie. Yeah, all right. You, you know what? I don't need your judgment. Well, right no, now, we're okay? calling you out right now. I don't need your judgment. If I knew you this was think that's across. improper movie borrowing etiquette, right? To Saturday Night Freak <laughs> Show, Yahoo. Uh, tell Sean it is, what? It's the only time I've ever kept a movie this long. Um, but he gave is it to it me. Is it though? <laughs> this, yeah, this oh. long, yes. All right, oh. okay. That's right. Eleven months doesn't count. Huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys are all so funny. <laughs> but I, I, I did pop it in eventually, and I did get to about twenty, thirty minutes into this. And once we got to the Eli Wallach dude trying to dissolve away his genitalia in a pot of oil, I was just like, I have to stop this and share this with the 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 three people I know who are probably going to appreciate this. <laughs> um. <laughs> And so I then held on to it for another eight months uh, until it felt right to bring it to the freak show. <laughs> oh, holy shit. Because we had to get through all those tremors. We, we, we had to get through. Yeah. We were in like a seasonal thing and then we were in just like I didn't feel it. And then it was just under a pile of other Blu-rays at a certain point. And then we finally got That's to a dedication. point. And you had to do your spring you... of sequels. Right. Yeah. So we finally got to a point. <laughs> Where I felt I well, could, I, I got to tell you, this. I am glad that I have uh, seen this right. film because uh, you know, like I said, uh, it, it was surprising. I guess it, this a, a movie with a pedigree like this. Wait, what the fuck is this? Like a Morlock or something? <laughs> what, is, what are we looking at on this I think poster? That's death. That's death. oh, that's death on the top. That, oh, that is Black Panther. Okay. The, it, the the poster promises a uh, uh, epic fantasy adventure. The movie doesn't deliver in any kind of way. I mean, it's just weird. There's nothing right? on this that you didn't get in this movie. But I thought that <laughs> briefly during this film, I did think that there was maybe a window for a film genre of like uh, Barbarian Kickboxer, Barbarian Kickboxer 2, Barbar- you know, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. This feels like it should exist. Because you've never seen that. Mm-hmm. Right. Barbarian Kickboxer, right? It's right. always guy with a sword. But if he didn't have a sword. What would he do? Yeah, he was just a fucking karate master running around and, you know, and Conan the Barbarian. And that's what we get. Nobody had a sword in this movie. No. That was the other thing. When you meet a man with a sword, <laughs> you lose. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> profound. No, well, yeah. I mean, that's wisdom. And I'm trying to party here. Unless wow. you have a gun. <laughs> wow. I'm just going to unhook, unhook your mic. Um, <laughs> so. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I uh, it was just bizarre. I couldn't follow it. Uh, you know, I was trying to figure out like what the you know for entertainment value. I think it ran out like pretty much after the Eli Wallach thing. Yeah, where we just kind of had these uh, you know scenes of that, martial that arts chase tournament scene and really yeah. let the air out of this whole thing. Yeah, and it? it's just like it's just like stupid. <laughs> you know, I mean, this movie is just <laughs> stupid. This is so, deep. Somebody out there, obviously, there's a blue underground uh, Blu ray. It's an acclaimed. It says on the back, it says itself. It might say it in quotes. I'm not it says in claimed. I think Harry Knowles of Ain't It Cool News, now disgraced, uh, former editor of Ain't It Cool News, right. has a quote on the back that says, You were just looking at it. I was hoping that. A pretty it, damn cool film. There you he go. He would say that. I'm, it's a that pretty damn cool film. Um, but yeah, I don't know if I, I don't think I would recommend it to anyone. I don't, 
I mean, I can't think of like a scene or a moment like you got to see this. It's crazy. Except I think the Eli Wallach scene. The Eli Wallach scene is yeah. the scene in this movie. Uh, you know, I mean, you can see Christopher Lee embarrass himself with a fucking crazy. It's like the yeah. the hats. It's a pointed hat. Like the guys in the, uh, you know, in, uh, what is it? Beneath the Planet of the Apes. Mm-hmm. Is it the second one? The, the ones who live underground and have the funny hats. Or the, is that you the know, second one? I think so. Maybe. And then, or the Thalsa Doom, Conan the Barbarian guys at the end, you know, they're all wearing the crazy. Yeah. Okay. That's kind of what it looks like. It's like, eh. um, I mean, it's a curio just because all these people are involved in it. You know, I mean, that's basically the interest that the movie has. But beyond that, it's like, it's impenetrable. <laughs> yeah. Uh, bewildering. Much uh, like Jeff Cooper. Yeah. <laughs> and where did he go? Did we figure that out? TV. TV. 80s TV and then it stops yeah. into Dallas. So a future career in films because of his martial arts prowess was not to happen for Jeff Cooper. May he rest. I mean, he may still be alive. I'm sorry. Uh, Jesus. Yeah, I'm going to get career rest. That, I'm putting that guy in the grave. He's, li- he's listening to this right now. I'll be like, what the fuck? Holly, so I got to ask you a question. It, it, Seriously, it. and I mean this with all sincerity. Mm, mm-hmm. oh, no. What did Circle of Iron mean to you? Mm. Well... Was I was I enlightened by this movie? No. Mm. No, I was not. And that's really that, that that was really the point of it, right? To enlighten. I think so. Yeah, I think yeah. by the end of this movie you're supposed you're to come supposed out to of be it transformed. This is a this is a message in a bottle. Yeah. Yeah. This is the book. Yeah. Yeah. The whole the whole world is telling you that all the secrets are in a book when really it was within you all along. That's what we're supposed to get, right? You should be able to open this DVD case up and there should be a mirror in here. There should, oh, what, there should be. There should really be. Yeah. should be. That's what it should be. It comes with its like, own mirror. Or at least be the disc with the no label on it so it is like yeah, a mirror. Like, exactly. Whoa. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I, we can put this movie out. Dude. I mean, <laughs> come on. How, how much can this cost? We're not going to make any money off <laughs> no. of that, Colin. No future, one's buying this. We can do it like uh, Alamo Draft House does and like, this is the craziest fucking movie that you've never seen. They do that with every movie. Everything. Every movie every. they put out. Yeah, we're on to you. Yeah. <laughs> we are on to you. You can cut really good trailers. Good job, Alamo. Yeah. I think you could cut an awesome trailer of this movie. Oh, I'm sure, sure. You, you could. You could. It would be the most hysterical thing that anyone's ever seen. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. It would. Yeah, absolutely. No, I, I completely agree with everything you said, Colin. The The most entertaining part of this movie was Eli Wallach, and I still cannot believe he was in it. Uh, it was... There were parts of it that were borderline Yorish, but they just didn't cut it it just didn't go ridiculous enough to make it entertaining and there was parts of it that were so slow and that guy's face is so punchable i fucking hated was it jeff cooper is that his name jeff, jeff? cooper yeah just for that alone i hated like, I, I don't think i no. can watch that again. like <laughs> the first like two like, minutes i have to look at him for an hour the and first half. few minutes of this movie i was like we gotta look at this face this entire fucking movie i don't know if i can do that and i just got more angry as time went on and i don't want to i don't want to put anyone through that no one should have to watch his face for that long that's so. why david carradine is the big face in the middle of this post yeah which like he does not have a normal face so like if you're if your face is looking weird next to like david carradine's face like no, what does that say about your it. face man the, the, the longer i looked at jeff cooper the more i was like you know david carradine's not that bad yeah I, you know, <laughs> you know? <laughs> seriously wow. yeah seriously i'm not even exaggerating mm-hmm. so no no one should watch that face for that long so i can i, I can't recommend this movie michaela um, this movie reaffirmed my agnosticism. Sure. <laughs> so I would say Put that's that a pass. A poster, you <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I didn't take away any of the things I'm sure Bruce Lee would have wanted me to take away from this. So oh. in my opinion, that makes this movie a failure. Um, I didn't even have an appreciation for martial arts watching this. No, because there I, isn't any. No, there isn't any martial arts. Like, There's no martial arts training. None. There's no training montage. There's no training at all, which it's like. That's what we love about those yeah. movies. So why are you taking it out? The, to, to call this, to even tangentially relate this to martial arts is kind of misrepresenting well, it because it's Bruce really Lee not. Would have been in it. It would have been good martial arts. Right. Yeah, like, I don't get the like. David Carradine is known for martial arts. Yeah, but, but he doesn't do any. Well, like, that first yeah. scene. Slow, I think he. Had, yeah, I think, I think slow, he had to. It's slow. It's dancing. I think it's, he had to slow it down for Jeff Cooper. 
I Probably. think so. Yeah. I think Jeff Cooper is the weak link in this movie. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I I can't imagine having to watch him in anything ever again. He yeah. was really bad. And maybe maybe the movie's not as bad as it feels like it is. Maybe it's mostly him, you know? But uh, it, it, like I went with Holly, it could have. It was like on the edge of being pushed into your territory, but it never quite made it there. That's because yeah. he never fucking hand glided on a giant bat. Yeah, like yeah, a and giant then, hairy bat. Yeah, and he didn't have an awesome theme song. Yeah, yeah, no awesome theme song. Would have been great. Um, too much wheel spinning, literally. And yeah, like, he didn't fight a dinosaur in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's it's a pass. It's a shame because I I was hoping for another yeah. your, or your repeat, but yeah. yeah, but it's a pass, Sean. Didn't fight and murder a dinosaur in this movie. <laughs> there were no rock men, no. Or lava men, or whatever. Yeah, no fiery arrows that didn't get shot. Um, god damn it. Uh, so apparently I made a mistake when I turned it off at the Eli Wallace part. <laughs> so I got to the best part of the movie, and it was just like, holy shit, it can only get better from here. And it's like, click. But you didn't know. I, I didn't know. I um, I feel like I probably would have done the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I mean, I was there was some there was some entertaining stuff about this. Um, the quote unquote philosophy of this movie is, I don't know, probably not as deep as it's it really wants to be. It's trying to be. I would it would have been great to see what Bruce Lee could have actually done with this. Like, I think it would have been more. It would definitely would have been more interesting if Bruce Lee. Think if Bruce Lee was in this movie. Well, it then would, you would you would at least have something to watch. Right. The fight scenes would have been right. Like, yeah. But I think there's also I don't you know, know actually I think- in uh, in and Enter the Dragon the version that we have now mm-hmm. has a scene at the beginning where he explains like uh, some philosophy to like a student that was cut out of the original theatrical version and they put it they put it back in now but like this is like that <laughs> is he just talking about and so cord tonight. went up the mountain yeah no it's like you cannot fight what you know the the five fingers one at a time can break but together they're fist or whatever the right fuck, that kind of like stuff. The, like the five boroughs you, yeah. you got, you got, <laughs> name them <laughs> uh you got uh, queens you got uh long island okay it's a deep cut joke for it's a ga- deep cut gotti joke deep cut yeah. gotti joke and which, i'm here and for i think it. that's the only i'm deep here cut for it. joke you can have um yeah, um, it does. This movie does at some point get it uh, a little repetitive and boring, especially again, like we said, around that horse chase scene. It's just like, all right, guys, let's mm-hmm. let's keep it going and everything. And they do do a lot of walking and uh, philosophizing. Is that the right way to say that? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, but yeah, it doesn't go into like there aren't like action action fingers swinging from ropes in this movie. Like it just doesn't get quite there. I mean, there's monkey people and orgy Jesus, but someone offers his wife, but it's not the same. It's not the same. It's not the same. That's just like because he, he was like, Ugh, "You can have my wife." My ninth and everyone wife. Everyone else was yeah. like, "You can fuck my wife." That's fine. <laughs> and those It'd people only honor, had one. Sir. Those people yeah. only had one wife, and they were this was it number up. nine. Yeah, he yeah. was like, "You can have my nine. He, he had him to yeah. spare. This yeah. was this like the love of this guy's wife. life. He's like, "I'm to fuck her. Do it. <laughs> it's the only way she'll be happy." <laughs> Um, so yeah, it's, it was a little disappointing. Again, I, uh, I, I was entertained on some level, but, um, I don't think there's not enough in it for me to recommend it for other people to watch it. So, uh, I think I will also pass on Circle of Iron. Well, it's, uh, too bad since you spent all, eight months trying to bring it here. <laughs> right. Yeah. This was sitting around for a long time, but my friend will finally get his Blu-ray back. So, <laughs> <laughs> so he has a happy so ending. Very, very happy. I told him about that. He's like, oh, so I'll finally get it back. Uh-huh. And he's like, he's been like, I've been waiting to watch that fucking thing again. He's like, I used to watch it every Saturday morning. <laughs> he's like, no, he's like the most like non, he's like, whatever, dude, I don't care. He's, he's the most, the he's guy a- is born without, uh. Uh, anxiety. He doesn't get it whatsoever. So oh, must like, be nice. Must be. That's what I told him that very moment. I'm like, must be nice not to give a shit about anything. Yeah. But you so know he, why? Because he's watched this. Film. Uh, he's he, reached right, the light he watched it and he got it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, he's just like, no, it totally makes sense to me. He, he has yeah. a book of mirrors in his house. He's like, he's like, you seem really anxious. You should watch this yeah. movie. <laughs> this isn't my movie. It's yours. <laughs> it's everyone's movie. Yeah. <laughs> but Callan, there it is. Callan is in it. He really he's is. Just, he got in it tonight. Uh, all right, then. Well, that means that next week we're going to be watching a movie that's chosen by... Holly! Holly, what are we watching next week? Next week, we are going to watch a little uh, dark horror comedy called oh. Motel Hell. Oh! oh. 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 That's a little cannibalism. It's a little cannibalism, a little fun. I've you never know. actually seen this movie. I've seen oh, yeah? fun. I've yeah, never. Parts. 
Is this a couple gonna, parts? Wait, is Rory Calhoun already on the Wall of Fame? He's at He's least in be one other one. He's yeah, in two other ones. Yeah, because he was in Angel. He was in Ghoulies. Uh, Wait, no. He was in Gil- no, no. No, that's uh, the other dude. That's from, the other guy. Uh, oh shit! He was in House Two. This is uh, he was in Angel. He's he been in some Hell else. Comes to Frog Town. Oh, yeah. okay. He's already he on the, the Night of the, the, night of the Lepus. Lepus. Yeah, he's already yeah, on the wall. Right. I'm consulting the wall right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at the wall right now. You have the wall here. Um, yes, yeah. He was already, he's already made it onto the wall. Oh, oh, all... said mm-hmm. The producer, the Sandy Howard, also did uh, Angel, Avenging Angel, and something else. And that, one of the other ones, yeah. Well, Vice Squad, but he did something else that we watched. Fucking hell. Uh, ooh. The Devil's Reign. Devil's Reign. Uh, right. Yeah, that was it. Okay. There we go. San- producer Sandy Hollow. Uh, Sandy Howard is on the hallway of him. Okay. Very nice. Uh, <laughs> this, is, this is what you learn on the Saturday Night right? Free. This is why you come here. Jam-packed episode, front to back. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for sticking with us, and we'll see you next week. Until then, the basement is going dark.